फ्रेंड्स आई सी ए कमाक्षी खंडेलवाल वेलकम यू ऑल टू माई नेक्स्ट वेबिनार टूडे आई वुड बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द पेमेंट प्रोसेस इन जी एस टी द प्रोसेस ऑफ द पेमेंट ऑफ टैक्स इन जी एस टी हैज चेंज एज अगेंस्ट द एग्जिस्टिंग रिजीम एंड नाउ इट इज मैंडेटरी फॉर द बिजनेस मेकिंग पेमेंट ऑफ मोर देन रुपीज टेन थाउजेंड टू डू इट इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली there are three different ledgers which are prescribed for the payment of taxes first is the electronic cash ledger second is the electronic tax liability ledger and third is the electronic credit ledger i would be discussing each of the ledgers one by one the first is the electronic tax liability ledger each registered person under gst has to maintain an electronic tax liability ledger the electronic tax liability ledger would show the tax due from a regular tax return and the interest penalty demand notice under each of the major heads that is cgst sgst and igst payments can be made using the input tax credit available in the electronic credit ledger or the electronic cash ledger the electronic tax liability ledger consist of two parts part 1 deals with the return related liabilities all liabilities accruing due to return that is gst r3 and payments made against the liabilities will be recorded in this ledger liabilities for opting composition cancellation of registration will also be covered in this part such liabilities shall be populated in the liability register of the tax period in which the date of application or order falls as the case may be the return would be treated as invalid if the closing balance in part 1 is positive the second part of the electronic tax liability ledger is for other than return related liabilities all liabilities other than return that is tds deducted tcs collected reverse charge interest penalty c etc accruing will be recorded in this ledger all payments made out of cash or credit ledger against the liabilities would be recorded in this part reduction or enhancement in the amount payable due to decision of appeal rectification revision review etc the negative balance in this part can occur for a single demand id also if appeal is allowed or partly allowed overall closing balance can still be positive refund of pre deposit can be claimed for a particular demand id if appeal is allowed in the favor of the taxpayer even though the overall balance may still be positive the closing balance in this part shall not have any effect on the filing of the return reduction in the amount of penalty would be automatic based on the payment made after the show cause notice or within the time specified in this act now second type of ledger is the electronic cash ledger it is maintained in form gst pmt 5 the payments would be made under three major heads that is cgst sgst and igst it is further divided into different minor heads like tax interest penalty and fee and others the electronic cash ledger would be debited for the total value in case of payments being made from any or combination of the above major or minor heads the electronic cash ledger will also display the balance available under the various combinations of the major minor head and any refunds received by the taxpayer would also be reflected in this ledger now what is the method of depositing this cash step 1 generation of a chalan in form gst pmt 6 and enter the details of the amount to be deposited step 2 select the mode of payment there are four mode of payments prescribed first is the internet banking second is the credit card or the debit card after registration of the portal on the card third is the neft or rtgs a mandate form will be valid for 15 days shall be generated along with the chalan and it is to be submitted to the bank making payment over the counter by cash or check or dd 
maximum up to INR 10,000 rupees, except by the government department or notified by the proper officer to recover the outstanding dues or collection during investigation or enforcement activity or any ad hoc deposit. The challan generated shall be valid for a period of 15 days. Step 3. A challan identification number would be generated and indicated in the challan. Post the credit of amount to the concerned government account maintained in the authorized bank. And step 4. On receipt of the challan identification number from the bank, the amount shall be credited to the electronic cash ledger and common portal shall issue a receipt. Now what if the my challan identification number is not generated? If the challan identification number is not generated even after making the payment from the bank account, then the taxpayer can make an application for the credit of missing payment in form GST PMT 7. So, where the application is meant for the taxpayer, where the amount intended to be paid is debited from the account, but CIN number has not been conveyed by the bank to the common portal, then the payment have, may have been made through any mode. An application in form GST PMT 7 is to be made. The application may be filed if CIN is not conveyed within 24 hours of the debit. The common portal shall forward the complaint to the bank concerned and intimate the aggrieved taxpayer. Now coming over to my third type of ledger, the electronic credit ledger. The same is maintained in form GST PMT 2. All the taxes paid on the inputs would be recorded in the electronic credit ledger. The input tax credit in each of the cases mentioned below shall also be transferred to the electronic credit ledger. First, ITC available to the branch for the amount of credit transferred by an input service distributor in accordance with the rules laid under the CGST rules. ITC allowed on inputs held in stock and the semi-finished or finished goods would be credited to the electronic credit ledger if the taxpayer applies for registration within 30 days of becoming liable to pay tax. Third, ITC available on the input held in stock and semi-finished or the finished goods by a taxpayer in the composition scheme converting to a normal taxpayer shall be transferred to the electronic credit ledger. Fifth, ITC available due to the taxes paid under the reverse charge mechanism shall also be transferred to the electronic credit ledger. And lastly, ITC available on goods or services used for business and for other purposes shall only be allowed to the extent applicable for business purposes. Now my electronic credit ledger can be utilized against the payment of tax liability only. It will be credited by the ITC claimed and recredited by the proper officer if the refund of ITC is rejected and it shall be debited by the discharge of any liability or refund claim of any unutilized ITC. The input tax credit of IGST can only be used for the payment first for the payment of IGST liability second for the payment of CGST liability, third for the payment of SGST liability and fourth for the payment of QTGST liability. Similarly, the credit of CGST can be utilized first for the discharge of CGST liability and the balance remaining if any can be utilized for the payment of IGST liability. Third, the credit of SGST can be utilized for the payment of SGST liability and the balance remaining if any can be utilized for the payment of IGST liability. Last, the UTGST credit can be utilized first for the payment of UTGST liability and the remaining balance if any for the payment of IGST liability. The cross utilization of CGST credit for utilizing the SGST liability or vice versa is 
not available now all the payments under gst have to be made either by using the input tax credit available in the electronic credit ledger or through the electronic cash ledger the table below shows the process of tax payment under the major heads of cgst sgst and igst so the payment of taxes can be made through itc in the electronic credit ledger and the balance through the electronic cash ledger but the payment of any igst cgst or sgst liability for interest penalty or fee shall be made only through the electronic cash ledger the electronic credit ledger cannot be utilized for the making the payment of any interest penalty or late fee liability now what is the order of discharge of liabilities first the self assessed tax and dues related to the return of previous tax period shall be settled second self assessed tax and dues relating to the current tax period will be settled and lastly any other amount payable under the law including demand under section 73 or 74 that is determination of tax not paid or short paid or erroneously refunded shall be discharged in this order now a unique identification number shall be generated at the common portal for each debit or credit to the electronic cash or credit ledger the unique identification number relating to the discharge of any liability shall be indicated in the corresponding entry in the electronic tax liability ledger and the unique identification number shall be generated at the common portal for each credit in the electronic tax liability ledger for reasons other than those covered under sub rule 2 so this finishes up with all the provisions relating to the payment process under gst hope you all found the content useful you can also subscribe to my youtube channel ca kamakshi khandilwal for more videos on gst thank you